All right, now it's been a while since I've like checked out a set of headphones, but I've been recently sent a set of headphones to check out. This is the set of got Robin SVO 21s. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Now, of course, a few disclaimers. This was sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're going to hear here is going to be my own personal opinion. Also, this is going to be more of a gaming review versus an audiophile review. While I will be going on audiophile stuff, I'll be explaining how that'll affect its performance in games. So, you know, with that being said, let's get started. First off is, of course, the box, and inside this box, we'll find that the headphones are very nicely packaged, and within the box, we have a bag, the headphones, as well as their cable, along with a quarter-inch adapter. All right now starting with the cable it is a very nice thick Thin. woven cable that's kind of long at 1.6 meters but thanks to the Thin. thickness it should be tangle free and durable speaking of which the 3.5 millimeter jack also has a very durable design being all metal with a spring to protect the cable where it connects to the jack to protect the cable from all the weird sharp angles that it may end up in further up at the split you can tell that the splitter is also very durably built as are the 2.5 millimeter jacks that will connect to each cup on the headphone which we now have here in all its metal and wood glory looking and feeling very premium despite being also very light. But don't let the weight fool you on its durability as it is very flexible and feels very sturdy. Anyway, let's take a closer look. So starting with the cups, they are made of wood with Sivga carved into them, though I would have preferred like just a logo or keeping it plain personally. But anyway, at the top is some venting and at the bottom are some plugs for your cable. The cups are held onto metal yokes with a pretty standard amount of movement and the adjusters they're connected to are completely made of metal with steps so it feels very nice and solid and durable. Now something I noticed that I really liked about these headphones are the memory foam ear pads, which are just super soft and cushy and just feel so perfect and to make these even better these things are easily replaceable in case you ever wear them out now as for the headband it is lightly padded but still very soft and is simple and clean on the outer side with a little bit of stitching around the edges now for those of you with a sense of vanity here's how they're gonna look like on your head or at least on my head and thanks to the relatively slimmer design they don't look enormous on my head so I think they look pretty okay comfort wise I'd have to say it was excellent due to the very soft padding which made it feel so plush on the head and being over ear headphones I think they should fit just about anyone quite comfortably those with long hair however should be a little bit wary as where the yokes are pinned in here I got my hair um, actually caught in between those areas and while this didn't happen too many times it still happened more than once so I just thought I'd let you guys know all right now let's get into the sound of like these guys so um something I should note is the sound of them now compared to when they were out of the box is very different as um, I actually was told to burn these in for two days you know essentially to break in the headphones in um, that did change the sound quite drastically like in the beginning the sound was very v-shaped it was a very strong v-shape and after about like uh, two two days of just constant sound and music playing into this to essentially burn in the drivers um this very deep v-shaped sound signature smoothed out into more of like kind of like a u-shaped sound signature where it's still a very warm set but not to the point where it's too much on like either end of the low end and the high end you can you know well that's kind of how it sounded in the beginning but now that it's been um burned in it definitely sounds a lot better that said the overall sound of the sv021s after burn in of course was surprisingly really good and i was surprised to find that these things are only 150 bucks i honestly thought you know considering the sound and the build that these were a 300 set of headphones i mean i mean look at these things come on but they're half the price they're 150 bucks and they're well worth that granted i do think like people who are more inclined to listen to neutral and balance sets would probably say they're just worth 150 bucks but for those who actually are into you know u shapes v shapes warm sounds you if you listen to these you probably would agree with me that these are well worth the price and their sound punches way above their belt having a warm sound signature at the low end there is a lot of bass at first before the burn-in they were definitely like almost bass cannons but after the burn-in period they've become less of bass cannons but still remain extremely bassy there is a really good reach into those lower sub bass regions very very rumbly set of headphones the punch is pretty good i would say it's not the punchiest thing in the world but it is still very punchy so it's got a lot of bass going on it's it's, it's a nice clean bass too so that's not necessarily a bad thing and i, I really enjoyed it if i'm being totally honest like if a bass head put these on they would have a really good good time because it's just a very clean bass a very deep bass lots of rumble lots of punch as i mentioned before just mm, delicious problem um this bass does lead to bass bleed because there's so much you know bass going on so like the lower to the mid mids uh, you get a little bit of you lose a bit of clarity right there a little, little little bit of detail because of this bass bleed i mean the mids um were recessed to start with but because of how much bass there is you definitely notice a great recession in the mid section this is kind of expected 
with extremely bassy and warm sound signatures. Now on the bright side, the mids are at least very clean, very smooth. Um, I believe the Sivga themselves had said it's a very natural sound, which I can kind of agree with. Detail-wise, in clarity, it's not the greatest, as I mentioned before. It's like... It's okay, it's kind of smoothed over due to like the, the sound signature. And another thing about the sound signature and the mids is because there's so much bass and so much highs with um, this set of headphones, I've actually found myself turning up the volume to try to like pull up those mids to get those details. So I get like a, you know, a more fuller sound, but you know, this also makes the volume as a whole much louder. So then you're gonna get a lot more of that bass just so you can hear that mid section, which is gonna be like mixed in terms of how people might like it. I think a lot of normies out there, a lot of people who aren't audiophiles, will probably enjoy it a lot because it's a very intensive sound. It's very engaging, which I did greatly enjoy in games, which we'll get to in a bit. But before then, we'll probably get into like the highs first. So the highs, like the bass, is very boosted. And there are times it felt rather sharp and harsh, especially when it was like straight out the box. After burning it in, it does smooth over the harshness of these highs because, you know, out of the box, they were just really, really, really harsh. And after the burn-in period, smoothened it out, it was much less harsh, but there are times when it did get sibilant and can get still harsh because of how they are tuned. On the bright side, haha! <laughs> The highs have a lot of clarity going on and a lot of detail, but sometimes, like I mentioned before, uh, it just felt like a bit much and it would just get a little sharp and sibilant at times, but you know, at least it's not as bad as when it was pre-burning. Sort of a mixed bag, essentially. Like, I really did enjoy how much detail and clarity there was here. There was just a lot of texture, but then just sometimes it would just hurt <laughs> due to um, the sibilance that you would get from it, so, you know. If you're very high sensitive, just do be wary of that. If you're not so high sensitive, then you know I guess that's I guess that's not going to be much of a problem for you guys. <laughs> All right, now moving on to the soundstage, it is pretty large. It, it you know it's it's a set of headphones, of course they are. But for a closed back set of headphones, I'd say the soundstage was around above average, and it's got a fair amount of width to it. There's a little bit of depth, so it's gonna have this ovular shaped soundstage, of course. And um, it was still felt fairly rounded, so I had a good sense of direction around me. Uh, when it came to the spacing above me, it was just okay. I didn't have like the greatest sense of space above me, but I still had like a decent sense of vertical space. Imaging, I'd say, was also above average, where it was like fairly accurate, not like mega pinpoint, but um, sounds were generally where they should be or where I felt they should be when I was playing games in particular. And speaking of games in particular, you think with so much intensive bass and intensive highs with like, you know, a fairly recessed midsection, you'd have trouble with these in a more competitive game situation, and you You'd be wrong actually. They did quite decently in competitive gaming situations. I wouldn't say they were like perfect for it, but they still did a pretty good job. Granted, you still had to turn up the volume a bit to get like the details in the mids, but once you've done that, you got everything very intensely coming at you. And like the sounds themselves are very clean and clear, which helps you locate people. However, I still still should note, due to the recession in the mids and the details that are kind of lost due to like the bass, there were times when I didn't exactly have the best sense of where people were because some sounds weren't as present as I would have liked or they were like drowned out by other sounds going on. Because when it comes to the sounds of footsteps in games, it's a combination usually of the mids and the highs. And with the mids kind of recessed sometimes with, um, depending on what material your character was walking through, it was a little hard to hear. I was then forced to try to listen to what's left of like the sounds of the footsteps which is usually in the high range, which, you know, did warn me pretty well, but having that mid-presence would have definitely made it a lot easier to find these footstep sounds. So if you're planning to use these, like, for competitive kind of shooter games, these things do a pretty good job, but not a great job. However, it is a very fun experience that's very engaging. It does a pretty good job pulling you into the game and giving you a sense of immersion, which was sometimes a downside in some shooter games that have a lot of environmental sound effects like Call of Duty Warzone, because sometimes the environmental sounds were just louder than the footsteps we're trying to track. Which then brings us to less competitive games where these things do a very excellent job. Especially if you really want a very engaging experience because of the sound signature. It really does a good job at pulling you into the atmosphere and this environment. Granted, I still wish there was a little bit more mid-presence for some more details for a little bit more of that immersion, but considering that it has like that recessed midsection and what I'm getting overall, it still was a very nice experience playing these types of games. The sound signature of the headphones just made the environment 
environment sound very lively, as it really brought out a lot of environmental sounds like the roar of the ocean and the rustling of leaves and trees. And despite the fact that I wanted a little bit more presence in the mids like I've mentioned before, I do think that the sound is lively because the mids are the way they are along with the lows and the highs being the way they are. It's kind of like they sacrificed a little bit of immersive sound to create a little bit more of a lively sound while still being immersive at the same time, just in like a different way. So for like less competitive games that are more worldly, open world and whatnot, these things do a pretty great job. All in all, these are a really good intensive set for gaming, whether you're doing competitive gaming or non-competitive gaming. Granted, for competitive gaming, I'd say it just does pretty good, not great. Whereas for non-competitive game, more, you know, atmospheric stuff, like I mentioned before, it does pretty great. On a side note, these things kind of remind me of like the Medze 99 headphones, and I probably should compare them sometime, but I'd have to get like my hands on a set of those Medze 99s, but eh, we'll see. But regardless, if you do want to buy a pair of these guys, I will leave a link in the description in case you do want to, you know, just purchase them right now, because now you've watched the review. And uh, with that being said, that's that's pretty much it. So um, if this video did help you out with your buying decision, do, you know, leave me a like down there. I think it's down there unless YouTube changes and stuff, but you know, leave me a like, helps me exist in this whole channel space thing. You YouTube, you know, and subscribe for more content if you want to see more content. Notification bell, hit, hit the bell thing if you want. I don't know when I'm posting next. Also, I stream on Twitch every now and then. You'll see me live, die, and cry on occasion in games. So, you know, Twitch. Follow me there. Just, just down, down in the link below. That being said, guys, I'll see you guys next time.